Hello, fabulous doll people. This is my 2021 top want list. Obviously, it's not every doll that I would want or even every doll that I will get as I just put a Fairyland doll on order this morning. It's been done for like 10 days. Um, I just haven't had a chance to do voiceover and you know how it is. So this is my list and if you guys have anything you want to add to it or if you have questions, um, just go ahead and put them in the comments. This time I went to fairly lengthy attempts to make sure that I have all of the links on the slides so you can find these artists. So I think most of them are pretty well known, but uh, hopefully you'll, you know, you can go and look if that's what you want to do and um, see what also is out there. So this is a doll that I've always liked, and I don't think I would have really put the amount of attention into it if it wasn't for Allison on Muneca's Poupets and Dolls did a top 10 sculpts. And I had really never thought about that before. What are my top favorite sculpts? And I kept coming back around to, um, it's color is what I call her. I think it's color. I've heard it both ways. Nobody seems to know for sure as far as I can tell. Um, but uh, Eerie is my favorite probably of her girls. But I like all of them. Her overall aesthetic, uh, I love. So I had asked myself, what is the one doll that if you're scrolling and you see a picture of you will always stop for? And it is her dolls. So then my issue number two was I don't collect MSD dolls. So I actually had thought about approaching her and saying, hey, if I fund an SD doll, would you make one? <clears throat> Which I still could, may actually do that. But I really had gotten to the point where I just really want one. So if she opened up a pre-order this year, I would go ahead and get an MSD girl. I would also be happy to get one on the secondary market, depending on the color. I really want one of her fantasy colored girls. Um, like I do prefer Eerie, but like the other almond, and then she has a new one. They're just as pretty. Um, so it's not, that's not a big deal. So she's definitely a fingers crossed doll, like a who knows if, when there'll be another pre-order. She did mention that if she did a pre-order for the new girl, she wouldn't have the elf ears. So I think she's maybe thinking about it, but um, you know, you know, it's, it's a, it's a who, who knows. But it is, she is definitely probably my top favorite sculpt. Um, I love the body. I love the face. She's so versatile. Like if you paint her, she can look a million different ways depending on how the paint job is done. And I just think she's an overall excellent doll. This girl, I love. I just, I'm head over heels for her. He did say, I met the artist at um, Pacific Northwest Ball Joint Doll convention in 2019. He had said in 2020, his first project of the year was to make an SD sized uh, driver. She's from Depths of Dolls. Um, and I'm probably butchering the name on that one too. But kind of also, I'm so sorry for the French Bulldog snoring in the back. I'm trying to take everybody out. On the audio. Um, but then with 2020 being the mess that it was, and I guess he has a, a bunch of other um, projects going on. He didn't get it done. And she's a doll that I keep the idea of just, go, you know, pulling the trigger and getting an MSD one so I can have it now, but I've resisted. I really don't want to get into another size of dolls. I spend too much money on the dolls as it is, and it, having one size I collect limits me to going completely crazy. But she is an amazing doll. I saw the doll in person at the convention. They're just beautiful. And there is something kind of ethereal and almost inhuman about his sculpts. Well, at the same time, they're so elegant. Uh, the hands, I'm a big fan of hands. The hands are amazing. The faces are adorable. She's a completely different take on a vampire, I think. Um, so I'm super excited and, and hopeful that he gets his SD version of her done this year. I know he is working on some other bigger dolls, so it's possible I'll have more than one of his uh, dolls in my collection at some point. I think he's really talented. I enjoy watching his Instagram videos. Um, very nice guy. He was uh, really nice to meet in person. This girl is probably my second favorite sculpt, period. Um, this is one of the things I'm glad I went to Instagram for. I don't feel super comfortable on Instagram. Like, I don't know what's going on. Um, but I've seen way more doll artists than I would have anyplace else. Uh, Chimera doll, this is her bat. She has a couple of other sculpts. This is her vampire girl. I think her dolls are mind-blowing. The facial sculpts are gorgeous. 
She does different resin colors. Um, she does clothes and these to die for shoes for the dolls. I did message her or I posted on one of her posts asking if she was going to do SD and she said yes, she was planning to do SD. Um, if she does, I will probably be broke for the rest of my life. I just adore these girls. They have so much sass. They have so much personality. The body sculpting is gorgeous. Um, she is one of the best vampires out there, which if I would collect almost all vampires if there were more of them. And I, I'm just so totally, totally in love with her. Um, I'm really hopeful that she does an SD soon because she's got another doll, but I've looked at her um, MSD size ones and thought I would just get one just, well, you know, then I guess the, the uh, color theory doll wouldn't be so lonely, but so far I've resisted. There is a really pretty mouse one um, in like a pearl gray for sale right now on um, Instagram. So I think she's definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen her. Um, she, her artistic abilities are just mind blowing. She's just wonderful. Last year, the end of last year, I had a coupon for the Artifex Kindred Twickling. I wanted to buy like two or three dolls. And then my car blew up last year. So that really sank a lot of my plans. This year, I'm still hoping to get three dolls. I had never heard of her until I started watching um, Jessica Sighthound Dame on YouTube. Her dolls are amazing. So she does the thing that is a big deal to me and will suck me right in. Um, I love fantasy colors and I love body options. So her dolls have probably the most body options I have ever seen. You can get different lengths of torso, legs, uh, breast size. She has um, quite a few colors. She had told me that if I wanted one of the fantasy colors that wasn't listed, it was possible to order it. She's very nice. She's uh, got an interesting blog. Um, she's very responsive. And her sculpts are really different. They're just not what you see all the time. This particular one is the Gamin. I, she's available. So she was one I was going to get first. I was going to get teal, though I really like the gray. And I also really like her white skin. It's not super white, but it is very pretty. Um, so I don't know what color I'm going to settle on now because she has quite a few really nice colors of the casting service that she uses. So um, you'll see. But Gamming was, was my original first choice doll. Um, now it's probably Ingenue. I had, to, I had to do kind of a lot of doll soul searching. I was like, what doll do you really like the best? Because at the end of the year when I was going to do it and then things started falling apart, I was like, just get one, which I didn't do. Um, so this year, I'm going to try to just do one, but I don't know. I just, I just love these girls so much. I already bought clothes for them. Um, also on this slide, I did link to uh, Sighthound Lady's YouTube um, channel. If you've never watched her videos, you should. She has an amazing collection. Um, she's personable and she has a very polished look to her videos and you get a lot of good information. Um, she was a very kind of genuine person. And she also has French Bulldogs, which you know, obviously I, I like that in a person. I'm not the only person with dogs snoring in the background. So my top of my Twiggling want list would be an Ingenue. Uh, I really found my love for the Ingenue again on Jessica Sighthound Lady's channel because she has so many and you get to see them painted in different styles which is really really helpful. Um, she did, Reese did say that she was thinking about doing an Elf Ingenue which will financially ruin me because I don't think I can just get one. <laughs> I'll have to order a couple of elves. Um, yeah, I would die to get uh, an elf ingenue. Also, if you are out there and you happen to have an ingenuees or an elf ingenue from the Daniel and Magic Mirror collab, I really want to buy one of those. Um, hit me up. I will probably put myself in, in my significant debt for one of those dolls. Um, I just think the face on these, I really think... Her girls look like the, the 50s super, super, super movie star gals back in the day. They're just beautiful, 
Um, and again, these are another doll that I like because they're so open to interpretation, like painted different ways. They can look completely different, which is a thing I, I have found that I've really begun to value in a doll is um, having a lot of range. You know, she doesn't have to be one thing, but her sculpt lends itself to so many things. And the ingenue, I think it's just, she's just beautiful. Her eyes and her mouth are just so beautiful. And this is my third sculpt from um, Quigling that I love is Pieta. Pieta has a very extreme profile, which is very fey to me. I think that may be what I like about all of her dolls. There's something that kind of screams to me as fairy. You know, like they look human, but if you looked closer, you'd probably know they weren't. Um, I don't collect human dolls, so it's really gotten a place in my heart because of that. Like, it, I wouldn't look at these dolls and think human. Though I do know Brittany's Playroom, uh, Brittany on that, she has a, a twiggling that's, her dolls are what I would call like just, like they're just um, high-end chic, like the best dressed lady you'd run into at the, a restaurant somewhere. And she, one of her girls is styled very human, very modern, and it looks amazing. Um, she's very pretty. So I'm not saying that the dolls couldn't do whatever role you want, but to me, they look, there's something about them that is not quite human. I think Pieta really uh, embodies that. Like when I look at her, she's a, she's beautiful, but you know, I, you know, you would think maybe not quite a person. And I've always thought that like when I was doing my uh, Titiana, my thought had been that if you were walking through the woods and you saw one of these girls, you would think, at first, your first thought might be that somebody, some beautiful woman just wandering through the woods, but if they turned and looked at you, you would know, you're probably in trouble at that point. They're not human. So, but that is a thing I, I just really value about PA guys, and she has such a unique, beautiful sculpt. Um, I really have no idea what color I want of the three to be or the four or whatever I wind up buying this year. I feel like it's going to be way too much. But she, she's a gorgeous sculpt. I love Magic Mirror. I have loved her for years. I just can't get past the size of the dolls. So she did do an SD size Maeve, which she did say she's thinking about releasing this year, which if she does, again, I'm ruined. I may get more than one. I would love if she did Orla um, in an SD size. And she has another girl I really love. And her name is escaping me. I think her sculpts are so beautiful. I love, particularly love the bodies of her dolls. And I did find out recently that when she did the SD Maeve, she only did the head. So you had to hybrid it on something else. She did say she had some kind of special stuff in mind for this year. I'm really hoping she does an SD girl body. Uh, her bodies are part of the reason I love the dolls. They're so beautiful. They have interesting posing um i just am really hoping that she does a full sd doll she also does a lot of interesting colors um in fact she asked me and somebody were on her page uh one of the other gals in the group talking about how we would love to see another sd may border and um so she asked what color we would want so hopefully there'll be some out there that are different colors and um if she started doing SD girls, I, I would be financially ruined this year as well. I just love them so much. Well, Lily Cat has also some very not human looking dolls to me. There's a completely different aesthetic to them. Um, currently, I only collect Elena. I'm really looking forward to this Indira doll. It's going to have a totally different body. So here's my... So when she had the purple and the teal order, I really wanted the purple and maybe the teal too. But I don't like the plum body. So I kept trying to talk myself into it. And then I even have lists here that I'm still looking for them. But I kind of don't think I am. Uh, Jessica, Sightown Lady, had got a mint lease or lice from a friend of hers, which is stunning. And she had that and the Elena together. Um, she got the teal Elena from that past, the just the most recent order. And it's way bigger. Like, to me, it's significantly bigger. I really love the Loon body, um, which was the original body. 
And I am looking for Elena in white skin, dark tan, and caramel on the lean body if anybody has them. Large breasts, though, I didn't actually realize there's a different sizes in that, but somebody had a, a, a dark tan one, and I was like, oh, I'm getting it. I was so excited. And then she said it was in small breasts, and she sent me the pictures. That I So, okay, I don't want a small breast. But the new one she has coming out, I'm really excited to see the new face and the new body sculpt. Um, I... Her dolls were kind of like Pasha Pasha's. When I first saw them, there, I wasn't, I was like, I don't know that I like this aesthetic. But now I adore it. Um, I do the Elena's as my unicorn girls. Uh, I buy the little horns. I have only have one, I say my, but I would like a small army of them, I guess. At this point. Uh, they are so unique looking, so beautiful. That loon body is so elegant and gorgeous. Um, I think she's a super talented artist. Rachel is her name. Um, and I, I look forward to seeing her collection expand. She's very popular with her smaller dolls. Um, I think I see more of those for sale than I do her SD size dolls. So I hope to see her SD girls expand out. Um, and they're just a complete, like my finished girl is so beautiful. Like you can't, I can almost not walk past that case and stop to actually kind of lean in to look at her. She's beautiful. And she's a doll who I kept the uh, company face up, which I don't usually, because I have a very clear aesthetic for my dolls. And so I tend to want to have them painted by somebody. Um, but that's another thing that Rachel does very well is her company face ups are really, really pretty. Not to say that any of the other artists aren't, I just don't know personally how theirs are, but I, when I got the Elena that I have, which is the, pur the purple gray, um, my plan was to wipe the face up and get it redone, but it was just really a beautiful face up and I kept it. So it's another thing that you found, I guess, when you're looking at these dolls. So this is a doll I can only hope to get on the secondhand market. I really want the elf, uh, I believe her name was Beat real bad. I only want her in blue blood. I'm obsessed with Pasha Pasha's doll. The very thin look, what I always kind of refer to as the twiggy look, was never something I liked. And when I first saw her dolls, it's they're kind of an odd size. They're like a very small SD. And then they were, they're very severe. I would, this is I think the word I would use. Um, and I didn't, I, at first I was like, oh, I don't like that. But then I kept, I couldn't stop looking at them. I kept going back and looking and going back and looking. And uh, it is, I, I think I've done a lot of kind of getting outside of my normal look that I like this, well, probably the last two years. And I've really come to appreciate the artist stalls. Um, but Pasha Pasha stalls were the, my first stepping over that line, I guess. I love her dolls. If she did more fantasy sculpts and had more fantasy colors, I would have more Pasha Pashas than it's probably okay to have. Um, I was really wanting to get one of her one-offs, her uh, full sets that she does, but the, her last one went for $5,800, which congratulations, Pasha, you deserve it. But that kind of <laughs> might price me out a little bit. Um, she's doing Alice in Wonderland theme, which uh, I don't know. I keep thinking, it's so cute. I don't even need both of them. Uh, but she is just an amazing artist, and she is an amazing person to deal with. Her and her wife Erica run the business. They are incredibly responsive, very sweet. Um, it's clear that this is her passion, and she wants everybody to be happy. So I'm eagerly waiting for my original body to come. I have the thirst head, which is the vampire head. It's an illness illusions being painted. I'm also eagerly waiting for that. Um, I have a pair of custom eyes on order. I got a beautiful Ursarna dress to go with her. Um, they're just, I, I just am so excited about her dolls. So I'm hoping to find the beat, uh, secondhand market. I probably only want the blue blood, but would possibly consider white skin. Um, and I just, I'm hoping to see more fantasy things in her line this year. I know she has a ton on her plate right now, but um, she's just amazing, so.
So I know for sure I'll get a LaBelle de Jour this year. Um, I had seen her dolls. I think I saw them. I was looking at conventions because when Resin Rose got canceled in 2020, I was pretty bummed. And I started looking at El Doll. Uh, there's a lot of dolls that you can get at El Doll. You can't get any place else. And I saw her dolls. Um, I would like to get an Ondine, and I think the other one is Nayada, uh, eventually. But the, her sculpts are, again, obviously there's a trend here with me. They're not human looking to me. They're, they're very, well, I think that her dolls are supposed to be sirens, and you could definitely get that feeling from them. Um, they are also one of those dolls that can look completely different depending on the face up. So to me, they're almost a challenge because like Ondine, who I, I really like, she has these very exaggerated lips. Her mouth is very exaggerated. And it's, uh, I think it's kind of almost a challenge to get exactly what you want. Um, but her two coming up, Narf and Water Lily, I adore. Uh, I think they're beautiful. Um, I was super excited about Narf, and then she posted those pics of Water Lily, and then I'm like, oh, I'll have to get the balls. Um, she also does a lot of fantasy colors, which I love. There's just such a great element to her dolls. They're totally unique. Nothing else looks like them. Like, you're not going to look at them and think, who is that? You will know it's one of her dolls. Um, she's also a great artist. She's incredibly personable. She's super fun to talk to. Um, it's obvious that she's super passionate. Not not that anybody else is not. Like if I, if I call one artist out and say I, I like them, all that probably means is I've had more back and forth interaction with them than anybody else. But um, I'm super excited to get one of her dolls in my collection. Uh, probably two. I think she's getting pretty close to doing her pre-order. So uh, that this might be one of those things I check off fairly quickly. Um, but, and she's also working on a new body with, with more jointing. I just saw pictures of that the other day on her Instagram. So I definitely think she's a company to watch. Uh, I also like that she started off with, I think, just the two, just Ondine and Nayada. And then she has branched off into a lot. Like there's a, uh, Byron came out. I'm totally drawing a blank, which always happens when doing these things. It, it, I know when I was looking at these, Kind of production sketch ones like you like I have here on the slide there was probably five so she has a great um she's getting a real great range I like to have a lot of choices that's a thing that companies if you want me why from you um I like a lot of choices I like a lot of body configuration choices I like vampire head options I like everyone should make vampire head for every <laughs> um I like fantasy colors so and she has all of aside from the vampire thing she has everything going on there so she's a, a great artist i think you should give her kind of give her a look at too and hopefully these two girls will be in my collection by the end of the year so this guy is actually on layaway um i put him on layaway i'll be making a second payment march 11th i did a, a three-month pay layaway on him so i put him on layaway at the beginning of february I got him specifically for my doll Chateau Lillian, who's going to be my Lady Amalthea, who's at Nocturne Dolls being painted right now. Um, they're a little small, but I've seen pictures of them with the SD dolls, and it's not jarring. I'm not usually a pet person, um, which is mainly just because, like, so he's 300 bucks. It was $325, I think, with shipping. Um, and so I always... Right when I'm going to pull the trigger, because, like, I love those little resin dragons um, come in the really cute kind of candy colors. I can't, I'm sorry, I'm, like, totally drawing a blank on who makes them. And I always think I'm going to get one. But then when I look at the money, I'm like, we could put that in a doll, or that could buy another dress. And I tend not to pull the trigger on it. But I really love her dolls. They're very, uh, they have a lot of points of articulation. I think she does the heads are clay and the feet or resin um and they're just beautiful she's just beautiful works of art uh the picture that you see here on the the slide is the actual one that i'm getting um and she's also really nice to work with so she's been great um so i i am pretty excited to get this guy and i also feel like it's a good sign that 
I have one of the one of the dolls on my 2021 want list before I even posted the list. So I'm, I'll be super excited to get him. I think it's going to be great pictures with him and um, my my lady Malthea. And she has a lot of really neat little dolls that she does. Uh, she's definitely worth giving a look to. So I'm completely in love with this pet doll. This actual picture, I had the opportunity to buy it, buy it but I didn't have the money. And she wasn't doing layaway, but she did say she was going to do customs later this year. Um, custom beasts and to, that she would let me know. I'll probably touch base with her uh, after my unicorn is paid off. I want to get one of these to go with my Strega, who's my white skin Lutz uh, vampire elf Lishi that's off being painted at illnesses. He's sort of the evil sister of my uh, Lishi that I have now. Um, in the beginning, I had like a, a whole story, which I kind of has kind of gone the wayside. It was never super fleshed out. And honestly, this character wasn't even in it. <laughs> But I got the opportunity to buy this full doll in white skin, which I always prefer white skin um, if I'm not looking at fantasy colors. Though to me, white skin is a fantasy color because usually most companies do like a paper white skin, which is what I prefer. They don't collect human dolls. I don't want you to look at the doll and think, oh, that's a person. Well, you know, you know what I mean. Um, and the doll's name was Strega from the lady I bought it from, and which means witch. And I was just like, this is... She just fell into place and she filled sort of this gap in the story. And I just think that the, this guy would work so well with her. Um, Sophia sent me pictures of him with some dolls. She didn't, doesn't actually collect ball jointed dolls, I think is what she told me. But obviously her, her animals have been bought as ball jointed doll pets. So she had had one of her customers send her this very cool picture of the three dolls and kind of a, a true looking sort of Victorian witchy attire with one of these guys kind of wrapped around the legs and it's just very effective. So and this is actually one of the dolls I'm I'm the most excited for, which is funny because again, you know, I'm not really into pet pet dolls, but um I think with the markings on the head, because she makes um most of her beasts don't have them. Um I'm also hoping if I can get the custom to get the black. This one looks white with like gray points and I would have totally taken it, but I think the black will look uh, better with her. Um, I this, this little guy has so much sense of just menace and that what I love about fairies and all of that is really if you read the lore, they're, they were to be feared. It wasn't something they were like, oh, it's a little fairy, you know, like, like we've kind of minimized it today they were creatures of magic and you were afraid of them. And um, I like that feeling of the, I think this one piece of art right here almost completely sums it up, that just feeling of something you should probably be afraid of. I'm super excited to get him. Um, and obviously I'll put, be posting pictures and possibly a video when I get him um, into my place. So thanks for watching my little video again. Um, I am working on my audio, which I know is still not good. Um, I'm actually working on the whole thing. I'm hoping to get a tripod and some other stuff. So uh, hopefully as I continue with this, uh, the videos will get better. <laughs> I appreciate any of you that are suffering through them <laughs> as I go through my growing pains and are kind of sticking around to keep an eye on them. Um, I've got a couple of Things coming in, not it, not probably anytime real soon, but uh, as soon as I do, I'll put up another video. And thanks again for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week.